Hi there, welcome to the latest episode of my 10 Minute Moan. And the topic of this 10 Minute Moan is something that I touched on myself back, I think I've done a February, I've done a video on it, I'll, I'll stick something up in the top corner at the end of the video and you can have a look at the video done a few months ago. And the topic is the black hole getting faced by the SNP once we have a terrible election campaign. Okay? And I believe, I still believe back in February, and I still do now, and this article backs it up, that they could be bankrupt. If the Scottish electorate do the right thing and don't vote for them. Right? Now, the Scottish Daily Express journalist um, Douglas Dickey has done an article this morning. And the headline is, Cash-strapped SNP faces financial misery as potential £700,000 black hole emerges. The Express investigates the Nationalists have benefited massively from this Westminster short money, but if polls are to be believed, they stand in course to lose a fortune later this year. The short money is one of two um, big tranches of money the SNP get from the MPs at Westminster. <clears throat> and if you watch the video I've done uh, in February, you'll see I'll discuss short money, but also discuss the ministerial levy that the SNP charge their um, MPs and also their, S their MSPs. And it's a minimum £250 per month. Some actually could take more from spot it's fortunes. So their article concentrates on the short money, but there is also this uh, Westminster levy that would come off, the ministerial levy, I do apologise to call it. And that would give them an even bigger black hole. All right. So their story says, the SNP is facing a financial black hole of £700,000 at Westminster, with the party predicted to lose dozens of seats in the general election. The Nats have already have money woes and seen donations dry up to almost nothing in recent years. Now, again, in the video I done, I looked at the accounts for 2021 and 2022 for the Nationalists, and I've lost money each year. I've lost lots of money. And it was actually quite surprising because our treasurer writes some notes in the introduction to the accounts, and in it it said that they only lost money in 2022 because they always spend a lot of money in election years. What election was there in 2022? I can't think of one. There was definitely one in 2021. There was one for Hollywood and the lost fortunes. But I can't remember any. So in 2022, when there was a non-election year, they still lost fortunes. So their story continues, and with an ongoing police investigation into an alleged £600,000 missing, it has led to suggestions the party will struggle to afford to fight the campaign. The Scottish Express can now reveal the SNP would lose a minimum of £640,233 if the latest predictions for the election are correct. Opposition parties at Westminster are entitled to so-called short money to help them carry out their work. Any party with at least two MSPs, eh, sorry, MPs or one MP and at least 150,000 votes is entitled to the cash boost. The amount is calculated based on how many votes a party gets and the number of MPs they had elected at the last general election. Each MP is worth £21,500 in short money, while every 200 votes for the party nabs an additional £42.82. It does mount up. The Nats are currently entitled to over £1.27 million in general short money a year after winning 48 seats and 1.2 million votes, although the actual figure is over. 1.3 million when travel is included. I suppose that's true, but you know, travel and some of the short money you wouldn't need to spend if you're not sending the MPs. So it's not all uh, money off the bottom line, although a considerable amount would be. Um, a lot of it's just wooden dollars. And according to the election map UK ruling predictor, they are on course to win just 15 seats when the nation goes to the polls. That would be worth £321,570 in short money, way down and the 1.03 the party currently claim for its MPs. That would be a considerable drop. And obviously they would have a knock-on effect to the parliament, parliament, <laughs> parliamentary levy that they charge. And they currently have 48 seats, is it? 
So if they lost, they went down to 15. I, I don't think they will. I mean, I would still be delighted if they had ended up with a number in the low 20s. So if you end up with a number in the low 20s, you're going to be losing 20-odd um, seats. You would be half in your, all your money. That would be fantastic. But if you base on this election's Maps UK with a recent poll, most recent poll that came out, uh, that suggested that the SNP could win 15 seats, which would be fantastic, wouldn't it? The most recent poll from Redfield and Wilton suggests they would win just 31% of the popular vote in Scotland, although it's impossible to predict turnout. If it was the same turnout as 2019, that would equate to 855,000 votes worth £183,000 in short money, which is a drop of 83 grand. In total, the Nats, if the Nats returned 15 MPs on 31% of the vote, their general short money entitlement would plunge by £765,000. Oofed, right? Ah, a major blow to the party. And that doesn't even take into account the fall in short money used for travel, but that's really irrelevant because I don't know if you can make a profit out of that, so you're not sending the MPs, you just, you know, you're not getting money that you were spending anyway. The latest figures from the Electrical Commission show that the Nats attracted just £75,000 in bequests and people's wills during Humza's first nine months in charge, with only one cash donation from a living person. That £5,000 was handed over to help fight the Rutherglen Hamilton West by-election, although the relatively paltry sum failed to stop a Labour victory. Further donations relating to properties were received, including one from Cor Unum in Largs, whose sole director is Euro Millions winner Christine Hartless, formerly Christine Weir. Remember her? Gave a lot of money to Partick Thistle. It's a far cry from the days under Alex Salmon when the SNP raked in eight. 0.2 million donations, with a further 4.1 million following during Nicola Sturgeon's first years in charge. Around 5.5 million of this came from Mrs Weir and her late husband, Colin. But Mrs Weir, as she was formerly known, um, seems to have cut down the amount that she's given the SNP as well. So, that's the story. Um, it's cracking, isn't it? Right? But this is how important the next two elections are going to be. <clears throat> if in the Westminster and the next the following Holyrood election, we can tactically vote this mob out of power and right out of the equation, we could bankrupt them. Right? Because that's what happens when you don't have any money. Right? So if we didn't bankrupt them, they would have so little money, they would need to cut so much costs that it would be insignificant. They would be insignificant in power because they would lose a lot of MPs and MSPs and they would lose a lot of money which kind of ruins their chances of rectifying uh, that situation come further elections because you need money to fight elections, let's be honest with you. And I've already heard rumours, I don't know for anything more than rumours, that are actually asking um, potential candidates to stump up their own deposits for each seat that they want to sit. Now, the deposit, as the name would suggest, is returnable. It's only returnable if you get, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, I think it's 5% of the vote. So, you know, the deposits will probably come back. But if, if that's true, and they can't even give out money short term for a matter of weeks until the election's done, the count of votes, and they give you back your deposits, if they can't do that as a party, it's a bit of a scary situation. So, um, anyway, that, that's where we're at. Um, and as soon as the Westminster election is called, I'll be going into overdrive to try and defund the SNP. And I'll be telling folk that I'll be tactically voting and I'll be making suggestions because I'll not be telling anybody where to vote. That's personal people's own um, decision to make. But... If they feel the same as me and they want to tactically vote, I'll be getting the information to tell folk in each area who to vote for. So if you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're anybody by this SMP, have a great day. Cheerio bye now.